Hey, today we're talking all about progesterone deficiency and luteal phase defects, so stick with me. Hi ladies, welcome back to Fertility Mom. If you want all of the science-based tips, tricks, and secrets to help you get pregnant naturally and faster, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you know when I give you new stuff every week. Today kicks off several weeks that we're going to be doing on this channel, all talking about hormone balance, hormone imbalance, how to balance them, all that kind of stuff. So if you subscribe now, you're going to be getting lots of information. We're going to talk about PCOS, endometriosis, progesterone, estrogen, thyroid, adrenals. We're going to talk about it all. So definitely hit the bell and then you have to click that thing that says all because you want all of my notifications. I know you do. Do it now. Okay, so let's get right into it. We're talking about progesterone deficiency and luteal phase defect today. First off, let's do a quick review. Progesterone, if you'll recall, is your dominant hormone in your luteal phase. And your luteal phase is from ovulation all the way until your period begins again. Now, progesterone is produced and released by something called the corpus luteum. Now, your follicle, which has the egg inside, is the thing that matures during your follicular phase. And when you ovulate, the egg ruptures through the follicle and travels down the fallopian tube and then the follicle itself actually crumples in and becomes the corpus luteum. This is the thing that produces and releases progesterone during your luteal phase. Now, progesterone does lots of different things. It helps to continue building that endometrial lining to make it nice and cushy for a little egg to get in there. It helps keep that uterine lining in place should early pregnancy occur, and it keeps that pregnancy and lining in place until the placenta takes over progesterone later on in the game. So progesterone does a lot. And if you have too little progesterone, this can really cause a fertility issue. Lots of women have lots of miscarriages, or they have lots of spotting that, that go into miscarriages if they have low progesterone. Now, it's important to know this extremely important caveat to having something called low progesterone. It's all about balance. Your hormones, your body, your endocrine system, you are always trying to find balance. So if you have one of your hormones, estrogen or progesterone, if either one of them are either too high or too low, that means that your balance is off. And if your progesterone is low, for instance, for some reason, there's lots of reasons this could be, that means your estrogen is kind of having a party, going wild and doing its own thing because it's unchecked by progesterone. So it's not necessarily about the value of the hormones, it's literally all about the balance. So if the balance is off, they're not policing each other correctly, and that's the thing that we have to worry about. So if you're having a hormone imbalance or your hormones are not balanced and you have low progesterone, then you have something called a luteal phase defect. And that just means that your luteal phase is shorter than it should be. Your normal average luteal phase should be approximately 12 to 14 days. And that is to allow a fertilized egg enough time to travel down the fallopian tube and actually get into that endometrial lining that has been made nice, thick, fat, and juicy for you that whole time. So if your luteal phase is actually like 10 days or nine days or even shorter, your body's not giving your egg enough time to actually implant. So low progesterone means a luteal phase phase defect and in addition to symptoms of low progesterone which are things like spotting a lot during that luteal phase so if you're spotting after ovulation for several days then a couple of days of no spotting then spotting again that can be a sign of low progesterone anxiety during your luteal phase is another sign weight gain depression all those things are kind of low progesterone or progesterone deficiency symptoms. On the other end, you're gonna have high estrogen symptoms because again, it's all about balance. If your progesterone is low, your estrogen is high. So you're gonna have things like fibroids, heavy periods, PMS, fibrocystic breasts, uh, ovarian cysts. You may have clots, you may have a very painful period. All of those things are estrogen dominant or meaning that your estrogen is higher. So in addition to all of those symptoms that I just listed, if you are actually charting your cycle, you will be able to tell very clearly if you are having a luteal phase defect. When you are charting your cycle, you'll see clearly the jump in temperature after you ovulate, and then you'll clearly know when you start your period, and if that's nine days or 10 days or anything shorter than 12 days, 
then you're having a low progesterone issue or a luteal phase defect. So with all this being said, I'm sure you're sitting there like, well, how do I treat a progesterone deficiency? How would I even go about doing that? Should I take progesterone cream? Should I be doing suppositories? Listen, you can absolutely go see your doctor, your practitioner, and start supplementing with additional progesterone. However, you know me, that's not actually fixing the root cause of the issue. You can always take medications to hide symptoms or increase this or increase that, but again, that doesn't fix the root cause. And that's what we wanna do here on this channel. We wanna get your hormones balanced and your fertility going all naturally, all by treating the actual root cause of the problem. So in this instance, in this kind of setting with fertility, what we're talking about is how do we make that corpus luteum last longer and produce the kind of progesterone that it needs to because again it's going to need to produce progesterone to have a, an appropriate luteal phase length but it's also going to have to meet the demands of progesterone production and release during early pregnancy and that embryo that implants is actually going to tell the corpus luteum stay alive keep going i'm here keep building me up until my placenta can take over so it needs to be in really good health to actually do all of those things. So the things that we want to look at to increase progesterone are going to be things that we already want to do to increase our egg health and increase our optimal health. All of these things are going to help to create balance in the body. And these are things from your diet and nutrition, which can which make an enormous impact on how your body and fertility function. This is actually the foundation of how your body functions and how your fertility functions. So your diet and nutrition is one of the most important things that you can do and actually control to help create balance in the body. And I have lots of videos on that that I can, I will link to down below. I can link to some of them in the cards, but you can only link to so many cards at once. So I will absolutely list them all down below easily for you. So you can click through there and watch all of these videos and get to learn what you need to do. So diet and nutrition is one, stress modification is another one because if you're having lots and lots of stress, then your body goes into survival mode and it does not prioritize your fertility. Um, that can be one of the root causes as well for low egg health and low progesterone. In addition to diet and nutrition and stress modifications, you're also gonna to wanna to do lots of different lifestyle modifications such as decreasing your exposure to toxins like plastics and uh, toxic cleaners and that kind of thing. Again, the skin is not a barrier. It is a sponge. Everything that goes on the skin, everything that you touch actually gets absorbed into the body. So please be aware of the things that you touch or put on your skin throughout your day. You'd be shocked at the things that you actually take into your body through what you're putting on your skin. So that's another thing you want to look at, right? So our main goal with this low progesterone or luteal phase defect is to increase overall optimal health because that will increase and make optimal fertility. That will increase your egg health and therefore increase your progesterone. Again, it's all about the balance. If you are actually allowing your body and supporting your body in creating its balance, it will give you phenomenal fertility. It will increase that egg health a lot, I promise you. So your job is to figure out what your body needs and help support it and Get out of its way because we definitely get in our body's way all the live long day. I promise you. All the women I speak with have something that they have been doing that they didn't know actually caused certain things in the body and once we remove them or switch it about it makes big huge changes for them. So that's what your job is going to be. If you think you might have this low progesterone or progesterone deficiency problem then start to look at the things that you can do to help support your body and actually treating the root cause. And don't run to getting a cream or some sort of other thing and put a patch on it because that might not be the thing that your body actually needs and it might not give you the results that you want. Okay ladies, that was some basic information on progesterone deficiency and luteal phase defect. If you are interested in learning more about you and how you can create optimal health, optimal fertility, and hormonal balance within your body, then head down below, head to my website, and get my five-step 
fertility boosting guide. It's absolutely free and it's all for you and, and helping you gain better fertility so you can get pregnant naturally and faster. I so appreciate you being here with me on Fertility Mom. Lots more hormonal stuff coming at you over the next few weeks, so make sure you stay tuned, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell, and if you wanna know more about creating hormonal balance in your body, then hit that thumbs up video so I know that this is what you wanna see. And I shall see you next time on Fertility Mom. Bye, ladies. Oh,